Hi everyone, my name is Simon Lavender and today I'm bringing you a game called Undo, Weaving Fate Anew. This is the second game, it may even be the third game, that was released in the Undo series after the Cherry Blossom Festival one. And uh, this is in fact the second game I've had a chance to play, I haven't tried the other one out yet. But uh, the other one's called Curse from the Past. Sorry about all the um, eraser markings, the rubber markings. We were playing uh, another game yesterday, which involved pencil and stuff. So in this game, it's a mystery game. It's a mystery solving game, if you haven't watched the other Undo video. And this one says 1920s Chicago, and someone's died. And what we need to do is figure out, firstly, how they've died, and if we can but twist fate can we actually decide something about this person and whether or not we can change the course of events which means things happen differently so what you're going to be doing is these numbers in the top left hand corner tell you how to lay out the um the cards so they are in a pre-sorted order so please do not um change the location i'm trying to think how much space i'm going to need and what you want to be doing is uh considering which locations you're going to go to to improve the fate of this person. Can you make them survive? Can you give them a better life? And ultimately, can you then win the game? You're going to get points at the end, depending on how well you do. And these are going to be some cards out. Now, the reason why I have had one overlapping is because card 12, as it was in the last game, is a green card. It looks slightly different to the others. Some lovely artwork on here. You've got some revolvers. You've got a trumpet. You've got some cash. And there's some information around... Um, basically the circumstances on these particular events. So in this case, the circumstance of death, Chicago, USA, October 26th, 1929, and it was at 9.32 in the evening. Now, you read the card, and it'll tell you something about, so this isn't a spoiler, it's just on the card. In this case, it's a man um, lying dead, and uh, it's in a dead, dirty alley. There's a bar nearby, it's highlighted um, in, in black. And I'll come on to that in a moment. And then from this, you're trying to deduce what could happen. Now you then lay out these cards. These are kind of clue cards that you place next to these individual locations. Again, they've got a thing on them telling you where which one it's for. So this is his house. Now I'm just going to lay them on top of here for a bit of space reasons. You can do it to the side. But I have noticed putting them on here is a very good idea. And suddenly it's giving us a bit more information like cargo ship and La Rochelle, France. It's kind of like, okay, well, that kind of makes sense because I've been to La Rochelle, studied uh, algal biology there, a very stinky place, and uh, you're trying to think about, uh, well, is there some relevance, like has somebody come on a ship or something like that? Now, it says bar, and the reason why it says bar is because um, that is a clue card for this location. So in this case, um, you might want to read it, and it'll tell you something about the information. So in this case, you do read it because it's just part of the tutorial uh, as you set up. This isn't a spoiler. And loud jazz is coming from the, um, the bar's entrance. The band is skipping the trumpet solos. So that's something to be of interest. And look inside the box. There's a guy playing a trumpet. So maybe he's a trumpeter. Maybe we've got some information around that. You then basically have a number of times to try and work out um, what's been going on to try and prove this person's fate. And ultimately, as I mentioned, get a better score. Now, you've got a limited amount of clue cards. You're also going to have this card at the bottom of the deck saying it's the bottom of the stack, so don't look at that. Um, you're going to have some clue cards here. These are magnifying glasses. Throughout the game, you can use up to four of them to uncover one of these things at a place you visited. So even if I've been here, here, and here, I can then actually use this to then look at this clue. So that's something you could be using. Additionally, you've got nine of these kind of little time travel cards. You use one to go to the place initially, so you put it back in the box. And then you continue on with the other eight to go to any location you like. Now, knowing um, you'll then reveal one of these cards, you'll then, uh, so for say, I don't know, you went to three, you would then go to three, and from uh, the back, it'll say something like, well, should this person, I don't know, get on the ship, not get on the ship, I don't know, photograph the ship, and it'll be A, B, or C, and based on the information you've already found out, you're going to decide which one of these you're going to flip over, and it's going to be either, say, plus two, so you've improved the person's fate for some reason, uh, minus uh, one, or maybe minus two, perhaps, I don't know, or even zero, so they did exactly what they were going to do anyway. So that's something to bear in mind. 
when you play this game, you need to be conscious of the fact that like, oh, this person trumpeted here, maybe he's coming here. So maybe, I don't know if that's, this isn't a spoiler, but if that was a case like getting on it, is that actually the the best thing they could have done? You know what I mean? So it's, you don't want to just play out the story because you're not actually improving their fate. You haven't saved them. You'll need to make some decisions as to whether or not what you're doing is the right thing or the wrong thing. Um, and uh, in terms of coming to the review of this, something you need to be aware of is sometimes, of course, you only know what you know, and you need to then figure out, well, what else is there different to then make a decision as to whether or not this is the, the right thing to do. Now, compared to the Cherry Blossom one, the reason why I like the story is I've never been to Japan for whaling reasons. And um, in this case, as I think it was set in Japan, yes, it was, um, I believe Chicago, which I have been to, um, it has a bit more of interest to me. I know a bit about 1920 Chicago, so I didn't know if that was going to be useful. Um, and I used some hunches from that, didn't know whether or not it'd be relevant or not, but it was fun to kind of explore that. Um, but in terms of the story, I really do like the story. Now remember, you're only uncovering nine cards, including your starting one. So you have to bear that in mind when you can't go to everything. And at the end, it might say, you know, did you manage to you know, keep the person alive or whatever. We were able to do that just. And uh, there are, like, I think like the last one, there are four key cards. Now you don't always know which ones to go for. There's a bit of like a funny uh, couple of in jokes as well I found. So if you like uh, discovering something and considering where something goes and this kind of mystery as to the storytelling element, well, I really, really enjoyed this. And I know others have enjoyed this too. So um, if you like the first one, um, or if you like the other one, do ones, and you hadn't had a chance to check this one out, um, I was very impressed with this one. And in terms of duration, I think it took us around an hour. So it was a nice kind of piece of time to do this. Um, you might have also seen, I've been filming a video for Low Memory, which is similar to this, but involves puzzles. So that's a very cool thing to do as well. And I played Detective, which again is quite a similar kind of thing to do as well. So that's something to, um, to bear in mind. And when you do put the cards back, you put these obviously face down. You're going to grab your cards. They're going to go on top of where it says end of story. And then you're going to have here, which is basically just how set up the game. So you can only really play the game once. And of course, you could watch somebody else, which sometimes in a spectator environment, it's very interesting to see that. And I imagine the weight of this game will be the same as in uh, the other one, in the Cherry Blossoms ones, because they are the same amount of cards and everything else. But if you want to see if there is a difference, by all means, check out the video for the other one. I'll chuck the link in the description. And we'll be getting more Undo games. I'll be getting them mid-May, and you'll be able to chance to you know see how they pan out. One's to do with 600 seconds, I think it's called. One's called something about the Treasure Island or Treasure, Lost Treasure. And there's another one, I think it's to do with a free fall or something. So it sounds very interesting. So if you like this and you're keen to see some videos sooner, uh, as soon as they kind of come out, then if you hit the subscribe button, you can do that. And I'm trying to see if I can uptick the 115 likes I had last month. So if you like that, please let me know and uh, thumb it. And additionally, if you have any comments, uh, please chuck them in the YouTube box, as well as check the descriptions in case I miss anything else. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to bringing you another game soon. Take care.